Victorian law is blunt on the subject of traitors. There is only one punishment. The sentence is death. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangs, and I welcome you guys to yet another Fire Emblem Fates character spotlight. We are continuing down the Norian royal family tree by taking a look at the dark but brilliant Leo. Leo is the second oldest son and third child of King Garon of Nor, making him the prince of the nation. As with all the other Norian royal siblings, aside from Sander, Leo is the result of an affair between Garon and a concubine, and similarly to Camilla, the mistress only used her son as a tool to get closer to the king. As a result, Leo is very resentful towards his mother, and doesn't seem to have a relationship with her at all. Growing up, Leo was quickly praised by his teachers and siblings as a genius. He was quick to pick up on new things and showed a brilliant mind for strategy, Yet, despite this, Leo always felt like he was in his big brother's shadow. Realizing that he could never match Sander in swordplay, he took up studying magic, which he excelled at. Leo would eventually hire two retainers into his service, the rogue Niles and the dark mage Odin. He met Niles after a gang of bandits attempted to plunder a Norian palace, but failed and left the outlaw behind as a scapegoat. When Niles begged Leo to end his life, he instead hired him on the spots. Odin, on the other hand, was actually forced into Leo's service by Garon. Leo initially did not trust his newest retainer, and sent him on impossible, tedious missions hoping he would tire and resign, but Odin refused to back down and kept completing the tasks he was given with such dedication that he eventually won Leo's trusts. When Corin was adopted into the Norian family, he got a lot of the attention from the other royals, which made Leo feel a bit overlooked. Leo did not resent Corin for this, however, but kept honing his skills, hoping that his siblings would eventually notice him more. Leo is a young man in his late teens. He has short, ruffled blonde hair and brown eyes. He wears black plate mail armor with golden ornaments, similar in nature to his brother Sander, but he also wears a purple cloak with a collar. He is also often seen with his magical tome, the Book of Brynhildr, in his hands. On the outside, Leo can be seen as an extremely cold person with a rough exterior, but on the inside he shows that he has a lot of heart and a lot of compassion for those he cares about. Out of everyone in his family, he probably takes the longest to warm up to new people, and is initially mistrustful and skeptical towards new faces. Leo is shown to be extremely jealous of the attention Corin gets from his siblings, particularly Camilla, who acts much like the mother of the family. However, we learn in a support conversation that the reason Camilla is so distant with Leo is because she doesn't feel he wants her attention. This shows that Leo has some difficulties expressing his emotions and desires, and this probably stems from him being in Sander's shadow for most of his life, not to mention always mastering things on his own without needing the help of others. Leo is a very pragmatic person. While Sander's actions are held back by his sense of duty and honor, and Camilla and Elise are controlled mostly by their emotions, Leo lets cold logic dictate his actions for the most part, which makes him arguably the most reasonable among his Sanorian siblings. However, Leo also has a very vindictive side, as can be seen in the routes where Corin does not choose to side with him, where he's shown being clearly outraged and furious by having his trust betrayed. As a unit, Leo is a royal, and therefore, by default, a step above the rest of the playable characters in Fates. He joins in Chapter 14 of Conquest and Chapter 17 of Revelations. Being a royal, he of course has the ability to activate Dragon Veins, which, combined with his mounted mobility, makes him very serviceable on most maps. Leo's stats and growths are all above average, with magic being his strongest selling points. His weakest stat is his skill, but this doesn't really hamper him much, as magic is pretty accurate. Being a dark mage, he can use both tomes and swords, though he will primarily stick to tomes for the most part. Leo comes with his own personal tome, the Brynhildr, which is an extremely potent weapon. The Brynhildr has great accuracy, 
high might, and even some built-in crits. It also gives him a little bit of critical avoid, and also a mini Aegis skill of sorts that allows him to sometimes halve the damage he takes by magical attacks. However, since it procs on skill, which is arguably his weakest stat, you won't see it activate all that much, but it can be a real lifesaver on certain maps with lots of magical wielding enemies. Since weapons and tomes in Fates do not break, the Brynhilde will be a valuable asset throughout the entire game, and rarely will Leo ever need to use anything else in combat. Since he can use swords, however, you might want to give him some magical blades, such as the Leaven Sword or even Leo's Ice Blade, which both utilizes magic to deal damage and targets resistance. This can potentially help him a little bit if he's going up against very dangerous axe-wielding enemies, such as Berserkers, but in most cases there is very little reason to use any but his personal tome. If Leo has a sole weakness, it would be that his durability is not fantastic. 34 hit points and 16 defense may seem deceptively sturdy for a magic user, but placing Leo within attack range of multiple enemies can quickly get him killed, so don't overestimate his survivability just because he is a royal. If you really want Leo to be more sturdy on the front lines, giving him an angelic robe might be a good idea, but most people would consider it an utter waste to use stat boosters on the already powerful royals. Leo's personal skill is called Pragmatic, and it's the polar opposite of Sander's skill. It makes Leo better at fighting enemies that have already taken damage. This skill is great for finishing off weakened enemies, and it also gives Leo a little bit of edge against their counterattacks. Leo also comes with Malefic Aura, which essentially increases the magic damage taken by all enemies around him by two. This is not only useful for Leo, but it also helps other magic-wielding allies in his vicinity. For the most part, this skill can be easy to forget about because it just affects damage, but it is a very good skill nonetheless. Leo also comes with Heartseeker, which passively reduces the avoid of adjacent enemies by 20. This skill is very important to remember, because sometimes it is actually better for Leo to attack at close range with his tomes when going up against very elusive enemies, particularly if the enemy can already retaliate at range anyway. This skill essentially gives Leo a 20% hit bonus against his target if he chooses to attack them from one range, which can absolutely be worth it if the enemy is very difficult to hit in the first place, and it also helps any follow-up attacks made by Leo's allies against said units. Heartseeker is one of those skills that can absolutely save you from frustrating restarts, as sometimes hitting that one crucial attack is so detrimental to your success, so don't forget about it. At level 5, Leo will gain Seal Magic, which will allow him to strip magic-wielding enemies of some of their punch after a round of combats. Since his resistance is already pretty solid, and because the Brynhildr also occasionally shields him against enemy magic attacks, Leo is a very good candidate for taking on large packs of enemy mages, or weakening a dangerous magic-wielding boss so that your other units can safely engage. At level 15, Leo will obtain Lifestealer, which makes him a lot more durable on the front lines, and can even allow him to take on large packs of enemy units during enemy phase, granted he can finish them all off. An advantage Lifestealer has over the Nosferatu Tome is that Leo doesn't need to do a lot of damage to recover his health, as it recovers 50% of his total hit points. This means that enemies left on low health are still valuable targets for Leo to heal up on. Using a heart steal, Leo can be reclassed to a Sorcerer, Butler, or Strategist. Sorcerer is actually a pretty valid choice since it allows Leo to use Nosferatu, and it still grants him access to the Brynhildr. I personally am a big fan of mobility, so if anything, I'd rather make him a Strategist, but for the most part, I feel Dark Knight is the best class for him, as the skills really synergize as well with his playstyle. When Leo obtains an S-rank support with any female units, he becomes the father of Forests, the Troubadour. Forest will primarily be healing, and then eventually will be using tomes, so definitely pair Leo up with a magic-wielding waifu if you want Forest to reach his full potential as a staff and tome wielder. At the end of the day, I consider Leo to be perhaps the weakest among the royals. He joins a little bit too late in both of his routes. Sakura and Elise both enjoy more availability and staff utility. Takumi has the Fujin Yumi, which is a lot stronger than the Brynhildr. Camilla and Hinoka are both flyers, and Ryoma and Sander are just so much better at fighting. But despite this, Leo is by no means a bad unit. He is still a royal, which means he is one step above most other units in Fates, and thus he is a solid pick regardless. Treat him with care, and his pragmatic mind will serve you well. Uh, oh, and that alongside the ability to summon fucking trees from the ground to impale his enemies. That will also serve you well. Not to be ungracious, but why do you invite me here? 
Thank you for watching this character spotlight. If you want to watch more spotlights, you can click the link on the screen to visit my playlists, and there you will find all the previous spotlights I've done. If there is a specific character you'd like to see me cover in a future spotlight, let me know in the comment section below. If you found this particular spotlight entertaining, please give this video a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot, and if you want to be updated whenever I release future videos, you can subscribe. As always, my name is Min Manx, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.